I'm Danielle, I'm one of the district nurses from Everton Road Health Centre. I got COVID a couple of, about three months ago now. And my children don't understand, my partner doesn't understand when I'm going home and I just want to go to bed, I don't want to play, finding it difficult to do housework. Um, and the anxiety has been really, really, really tough. But I know that these symptoms, the fatigue and the anxiety, are completely normal. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to ask for support. It's okay to feel anxious and to, to be upset. You can talk about it. You can get help. Please don't feel you are alone in this. If you've had COVID, that's likely to have been a very scary time. You may have been frightened about what was going to happen to you, worried about whether or not to go to hospital, or you may have been in hospital away from your loved ones. Even after you've recovered from that initial phase of the illness, that anxiety will not go away quickly or on its own. It's completely natural to be feeling anxious at a time like this, especially when there's so many other stressful things going on. You might be worried about your family or your work or your finances. So anxiety is totally understandable at this time. And there's also a lot you can do um, to take care of yourself with this anxiety. You may be feeling more emotional than usual, notice your heart racing, um, noticing your breath more shallow than usual. The mind and the body affect each other in so many different ways. And if you can do something to take care of either mind or body, that will also help the other one. This is a time when we're really facing information overload, constant rolling news, social media. How much time are you going to spend watching news programmes? Who are you going to trust as your sources of information? And then making some positive choices about where you put your attention. You can place limits on how much time you allow yourself for worry by making sure you've got more positive things to focus on at other times. Could be loved ones, favourite telly programmes, a good book. How about taking care of the body? Firstly, it's good to recognise where in your body you tend to store your tension. Might be in your belly, your shoulders, um, maybe in your jaw or around your face. Once you've noticed your tension, you can begin to relax there. This will take time and practice, but it will work over time. You can do that by taking nice, slow, deep breaths and imagining that you're breathing into those areas of tension. You can also do it through gentle stretches and you can even do it through having a good laugh. It's impossible to laugh and be tense at the same time. It's also important to know that if we can practice being kind and patient and gently encouraging to ourselves, that will help us to feel safer. And that sense of safety actually has physical effects. What it will do is activate what's known as the parasympathetic nervous system. And through doing that, it will calm down a racing heart and racing thoughts. It's also good to know that help is a hand. All you need to do is to look up, talk Liverpool, they have lots of resources and they are there to help you. With COVID, the environment has changed. You won't be able to do the things that you used to be able to do. You won't be able to see the relatives you used to see. You won't be able to do some of the activities that you used to do. Your thoughts may have changed. You may be worried about the future, what the future holds, where the economy is going. There's a lot of anxiety around COVID. And along with that anxiety, swiftly on its tail, often comes depression. If we keep old behaviours and thinking patterns from uh, pre-COVID and trying to apply them while COVID is here, we will get stressed. So, again, this is where Talk Liverpool can help, is that we um, 
specialise in helping people adapt to their environment, uh, adapt their thinking and adapt their behaviours in order to minimise the stress and to move forward in life. So while you're watching this video, there's, there's, there's five things that, um, uh, five key points that the NHS would like to get over to you in helping you to manage COVID. The first one is connect with other people. Give somebody a call, have a chat. The second one is, uh, feeds into this, which is give to others. We feel better when we give. It makes us feel good. That doesn't have to be money. That can be time. That can just be listening. It can be having fun. Uh, it can be uh, being there for somebody. Be physically active. Raise your heart rate once a day. Doesn't matter how you do it, even if you just go for a walk or a couple of push-ups in your front room. When you do that, the brain releases endorphins. These are natural feel-good uh, neurotransmitters. They'll make you feel better and you'll get healthier. Learn new skills. I cannot emphasize this enough. When we learn new skills, it doesn't matter what that is. That could be baking a cake. It could be learning how to play chess. It could be learning a language. It could be just getting back to reading a book. When we're in an environment that is entrapping, as the COVID has done to us and society, when we learn new skills, what happens is that we get our control back. We are now, what we do when we learn new skills is that we're putting our will onto the environment rather than the environment putting its will onto us. Pay attention to the present moment. There is no value in worry. Worry is a crystal ball. We can look into the crystal ball and we can spend all our time in the future worrying about things that may never happen and it just sucks our energy. You may not be able to change the situation, but often what we can do is change how we react to the situation. If you're having difficulties with that, then we can help you. You can self-refer. All the details will be at the end of this video. Nutrition is a really important part of the COVID recovery process. Um, there's a lot of different symptoms that you will feel um, as a response to COVID. This can include weight loss, taste changes and having swallowing difficulties as well. Weight loss is a common symptom in COVID recovery. As we know, when we don't feel well, our appetite is usually lost as well. This means we eat less, we consume less energy and nutrients that the body needs on a daily basis. Infections in the body tend to make the body work a little bit harder to fight the infection. This means burning more calories than usual and can increase the weight loss that we have. There are a few ways that we can change our diet to make sure that we're getting the maximum energy that we can do to help um, prevent any further weight loss. So one of the things that we can do is eating little and often, so having smaller meals and plenty of snacks through the day to make sure that we're getting the energy and the nutrients that we need. Food fortification is a technical way to say add in foods to our diet to make it more nourishing. So for example, putting milk or butter into our mashed potatoes, it doesn't make the potatoes any bigger, it just makes them more nourishing. Another way that we can get more energy from our diet is to choose high energy foods. So this can include full fat milk, the blue top one, full fat yogurt, cheeses, and full sugar drinks as well. Some people might find they're having more difficulty with swallowing, so this might include choking or coughing when they're trying to swallow their foods and drinks. If you are having difficulty with swallowing, ask your GP to speak to a speech and language therapist. They're gonna be able to assess your swallow to make sure the foods and drinks aren't accidentally going into the lungs, because this can increase the chance of a chest infection. In the meantime, try choosing softer foods. This could be porridge, scrambled eggs, soups, milky drinks like milkshakes or hot chocolates, and high energy soft drinks as well. You could be experiencing changes in taste. This means the foods that you usually really like don't taste the same as what they used to do. This is completely normal and is part of the COVID recovery process and will gradually fade away with time.
Choosing tastier food options can help to overcome the taste changes that you might be experiencing, as well as having them little and often through the day. If you need extra help or advice with your diet, ask your GP to refer you to a dietitian where you'll be able to access more information. Breathlessness is a really common symptom and it's also a natural sign of our body working hard. What we also know is that breathlessness is a frightening experience when we struggle to catch our breath. And what I'd like you to do is to notice any worrying thoughts that come to mind when you're feeling breathless. It might be things like, I can't breathe, I'm going to pass out, or I can't cope with this. These are really natural worrying thoughts but what they do is trigger our body's stress response, which brings tension to our breathing muscles and unfortunately end up making it harder to breathe instead of easier. Try and think of a statement that feels true and reassuring for you about your breathlessness. It might be something like, I've coped with this before, this is difficult but I'm doing okay, or this breathlessness will pass. And try and repeat this statement as often as you can, or even write it down, and notice any change it brings to your breathing. Another tricky thing about breathlessness is that we're programmed to avoid doing things which are unpleasant or frightening. And we certainly know that breathlessness is, is both frightening and unpleasant. But if you were to avoid doing everything that made you feel breathless. It would make you miss out on a lot of the good things in life and you'd feel fed up and you'd also lose some of your fitness and your muscle strength. And unfortunately, this would again make breathing more difficult instead of easier. It's really important to understand your breathlessness, to get to know the causes and the triggers of what makes you breathless so that you can also learn the techniques that help you cope when you feel breathless. The more that you can practice the techniques that help you cope, the more you'll be able to keep going and keep active despite breathlessness. And this is the best way to overcome the challenges of breathlessness and to move forward with your recovery. So I'm going to go through some tips on breathing control. So at rest, your breathing should be quiet and regular. Try breathing in for two seconds, breathing out for two seconds, and then pause for one second. This will give you a respiratory rate of 12 breaths per minute. Aim at rest to take between 12 and 16 breaths per minute. Try as much as possible to breathe in and out through your nose. This may not be possible at first. The more you practice your breathing exercises, the easier you will find this. Try to think about your breathing when you are talking, breathing in through your nose and speaking slowly as you breathe out. Pause between sentences and allow yourself to take another breath. Try to avoid taking big breaths in. Let's practice some breathing exercises using Alona, one of our other respiratory physiotherapists, as our model. One breathing technique we teach is diaphragmatic breathing. Sit in a comfortable position and relax your shoulders. Place your hands just touching on the bottom of your ribs. Try to focus on breathing in slowly, pushing the breath deep into your stomach. Your fingers should separate slightly. Your chest should remain relatively still. Relax and pause between each breath. Another hand position you could try is placing one hand on your chest, the other on your stomach. Try to focus on breathing in slowly, pushing the breath deep into your stomach. The hand on your stomach should rise. The hand on your chest should remain relatively still. Relax and pause between each breath. Practicing in front of a mirror may help you to see your breathing pattern. Changing your breathing takes a lot of time and practice. Try practicing a couple of minutes every hour throughout the day. The more you practice your breathing control, the more in control of your breathlessness you will feel. Practice your breathing every day. Improving control of your breathing at rest will allow you to gain better control of your breathing when you become more breathless. 
Remember, getting out of your breath when you're active is good for you. Talk to your friends or family member about how you are feeling. A way we encourage our patients to monitor how breathless they're feeling during exercise and activity is to use the modified Borg score. Here we encourage patients to feel slight to moderate breathlessness during exercise and activity. If you're feeling particularly breathless, here are some positions of ease. This can include leaning forwards, resting your elbows on a table. In sitting, leaning forwards, resting your elbows on your knees. In standing, resting your elbows on the back of a chair or lying on your side with pillows to support your head and knees. This positive cycle of activity from the British Lung Foundation website shows how activity can help your breathlessness. The cycle shows how activity helps muscles to work more efficiently, improves motivation and eventually reduces breathlessness. Reassuringly, Pain is a completely normal symptom that you will experience. Pain can be defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. And I know that sounds quite wordy, but what that means is it's quite complicated and pain affects everybody differently. We have our acute pain, where, which can be classified as pain that's been present for less than three months. In the case of COVID, this could be chest or pleuritic pain that you may well have experienced, which is associated with the damage through the lung tissue. Or you may have chronic pain, which can be defined as pain that's been present for greater than three months. And this is less to do with the structural damage, but more the sensitivity of the nervous system. As I alluded to before, pain is complicated and it's multifaceted. Everybody experiences pain differently. We like to assess pain, using the biopsychosocial model approach, taking into account psychosocial impacts. The biopsychosocial model summarises how we address all factors that could contribute to an individual's pain experience. Another type of pain that you may have experienced is muscle and joint pain. Thinking back to when you were acutely unwell, you weren't completing your normal day-to-day -day activities. As a result, your joints will have become stiffer, muscles weaker, and exercise elements have, will have gradually reduced. And now if we look to the persistent pain cycle, we can see how it would be, it's incredibly easy to fall into that pattern where following stiffer joints and weaker muscles, the normal day-to-day -day activities will be harder. We will become stressed and frustrated because we can't do that, which may then lead to being more low in mood and worries that this might be the case going, going forwards in the future. You may have, a, may have affected your work, or your relationships. Pain, like I said, pain affects everybody differently. But I've got some top tips that I think will help with the pain that you're experiencing. So first of all, exercise. Regardless of your pre-COVID level of function nor exercise habits, Exercise and establishing a routine exercise regime is going to be important in improving our strength and tone of our muscles and reducing the stiffness and improving the flexibility of our, of our joints. We know that if we, if we do this, day-to-day -day tasks will become easier, our muscles will, are less likely to fatigue us quicker and therefore we're less likely to get and experience muscle and joint pain. That, in addition to the other physiological benefits that we know from exercising, being reducing our blood pressure, redu reducing our body fat, but then also the psychological benefits of exercise, such as improving our body serotonin levels and our mood and our, and our sense of well-being. My second top tip is activity breakdown and modification. As I alluded to earlier, those day-to-day -day tasks that you once were able to do with any, without any problems will be harder now. That is frustrating, but the way that we're going to be able to achieve those tasks again is by breaking them down into small, achievable chunks. Applying the three P's principle, pace, plan, prioritise. And I think there's a few really good resources that summarise this on the Chartered Society of Physiotherapy website and the Royal College of Occupational Therapists website too. My third and final point 
And top tip is managing your stress levels. As I alluded to before, pain is multifaceted and it's complicated and it all affects, it affects us all differently. But being stressed and having anxieties play a significant role on your pain experience. Having COVID or caring for somebody who has had COVID is an emotionally stressful, traumatic and fatiguing experience which will cause us to have stress and associated pain for months afterwards. We all have different ways of de-stressing and relaxing and continuing to speak to family members about how we feel is really important, but and also accessing support groups such as the COVID-19 survivors group and looking at the NHS resource Your COVID Recovery is a really are examples of really good and extensive resources. So in summary, they're my top three tips for if you are suffering with pain in the recovery of COVID. Establishing a routine exercise regime, pacing and planning and modifying your activities and managing your stress levels. So reassuringly, follow these steps and the pain in your COVID recovery will be made much easier. Thank you. Whenever we talk about adjustment, what we mean is coping and how we cope with something emotionally and psychological and something that's been really difficult or stressful event and how we learn to deal with that. And adjustment takes time and it's a different time process for absolutely everybody. So there shouldn't be expectations on how long it takes you to adjust. But as we know, sometimes we beat ourselves up. So I'm going to say some tips about what we can do about this. And the first one is really acknowledging, acknowledging what you've been through. It's been traumatic, it's been hard, and you've had to overcome a lot physically and mentally. So taking some time to just pause, reflect, and be kind to yourself with that. So thinking about ourselves with kindness and with warmth, and that can be so, so difficult. So one of my favorite ways to try and do this is Think about all of the emotions and thoughts that you have and what if a best friend, a family member, someone you love and care about was coming to you with these problems, these thoughts, these emotions, overwhelming, like low mood, anxiety, feeling really irritable, things like this. And what advice would you give to that person? How does that make you feel whenever they tell you that they're struggling with these things? How do you make space for them? How do you care for them? And try and take that and turn it inwards and think about how you provide care for yourself. How do you make space for these difficult feelings and these emotions? And how do you acknowledge that with compassion for yourself? You might be thinking you should have recovered by now. You should be back to doing everything you did before COVID. Everyone else is better, why am I not? Um, why is it taking so long and beating yourself up? And what I like to do is think about those thoughts as a bit of a poisonous parrot. So a parrot that's just bird brained, repeating them constantly. They're in your head, they're noisy, they're hard to get rid of. And acknowledging that and just creating some space for it and normalizing those thoughts, everyone has them. But whenever we have them, then thinking, do I want to interact with that? Do I want to listen to this parrot right now? No, probably not. So finding other things that we value and we care about and going to interact with them. So things that are meaningful to you, things that you can do and creating lists of those things that you can just pick out and doing that with compassion and care and kindness for yourself. So be kind to yourself. Give yourself some space to feel these difficult emotions. Let them in. Don't beat yourself up about them. They are really normal and adjustment takes time and it will look so different for every single person. So we've shared some resources throughout these videos and it's about finding what works for you. If you like mindfulness, you like breathing exercises, give them all a go and you might find something that really helps. I'm Ben from The Life Rooms. I work in the learning team as a facilitator, delivering some of the sessions that we have on our timetable. Lately, there's been a lot of stress, a lot of isolation caused by COVID. People understandably have been feeling very anxious. The good news is there is a lot of local support out there and you can access a lot of it through the life rooms. 
For example, we've got a Pathways team that's available Monday to Friday, and they can link in with over 130 partners and services that we have. They are mainly specialist community services that can help with things like housing, jobs, benefits, they can provide opportunities for social interactions and much more. We've also got our learning team. During COVID, we produced a series of YouTube videos that provide tips on how to manage things like mood, anxiety, physical health. There's also a series of cooking videos uh, hosted by our resident chef, Anthony, with a whole range of recipes that are healthy and delicious. Uh, we've also got physical health uh, sessions run by Trish, who takes you through a series of exercises. We've also got creative stuff there as well to get those creative juices uh, inspired and flowing. More recently, our digital team have linked up with us as a learning team to develop something called Online Learning Worlds. Now, this has got nearly 30 courses online that you can do at your leisure. So very recently, we launched our live Zoom sessions. Now, currently we've got four courses running every day. They last about an hour. You can access them online by going to our website. Um, they are a little bit strange if you're not used to doing things via video call, but actually what you'll find is a lot of the people that attend are kind of going through similar things. And we do everything from uh, depression, understanding anxiety, ways to kind of manage our health in general. We've got physical health offerings as well. So we've got exercise sessions going on um, three times a week. And we've got our partners involved in delivering creative sessions. So we've got terrific partnerships with the Liverpool Everyman uh, Playhouse, the Liverpool Royal Philharmonic, and uh, the Canal and River Trust, to name but a few and um, really get your creative juices flowing with those, as well as your confidence and your self-esteem. So all the details for all of this are on your screen. Um, just go online and you can register if you, if you haven't done so before. And we hope to see you soon. For me, COVID's been a learning curve. I've had to learn to take better care of myself. I've had to talk and listen. I've had to take time out to rest. We will get through this together. There are better times ahead.